I'll go talk with her. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, call to order the regular schedule council meeting for Monday, August 1st, 2016, 7 p.m. Mayor Lowry? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lindsay? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. Mr. Kraybacher? Here. All members present. Thank you, sir. And if we'll stand, we'll have tonight's invocation by Councilman Lowell McLaughlin. Everyone, if you bow your heads, please. Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to uh, join together to do the business of the city. Thank you so much for our health. Let's continue to push forward for the city and all the uh, people that live in the city, please, and their health, if you would, please. And allow us to continue in this endeavor that we're on to make it a better place for all of us to live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And we'll do the pledge tonight. We'll use the flag here behind us. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we need actions on the minutes for a regular meeting of uh, July 18, 2016. Mr. Mayor, Oh, Mr. Lowry, and you, uh, Mr. Lowry, motion, second by Mr. Leonard. Yes, sir, when you're ready. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Minutes past 7-0. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on communications, none tonight, so we'll move straight over to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. I'd like to share with the city manager's report. Uh, I will say it is nice to be back. You know, I did have a week of vacation. It's still always good to come back to work and see everybody. Uh, so, again, thanks for, thanks for having me back. Um, I'd like to go on with the city manager's report. Another action report, there's three items I'd like to briefly discuss. Kennedy Trust, we had a mediation on 729, which was last Friday. We got done about 6 o'clock in the evening. That took place down in Dayton and Morgan District. Um, we cannot discuss anything in open session. So next week we will be having an executive session, and our law director will be present, and we will go and give an outline of what we had learned in the Kennedy Trust mediation. Um, anything we do discuss will have to stay amongst us because it is a live pending uh, court case. <laughs> Uh, moving on, Twin Creeks, we actually have a meeting coming up on 8-11. Um, we will sell the parcel at that point in time. We'll have the check in hand for $189,000. I'm still working on those numbers that we can recoup. Once we deduct the money that we can recoup, the rest of that will go to the county so they can reimburse those taxing districts that are owed taxes on those parcels. And waste management, we've, I've had a couple meetings with them over the past three weeks. Um, we will be having, um, we're going to amend the current contract. I'm going to recommend we stay with waste management. There's, we, we're going to have the same issues going forward with any other trash service. One of the things we are looking at is removing the bags completely. And we are coming up with a low volume rate for low volume users and also our senior citizens. So um, with that being said, um, once we have the numbers amended, um, according to the current contract, uh, we'll have to have a public hearing for our citizens and then council can weigh in on, on it as well. Um, but I think it's going to be a win-win for everyone involved and there's some other certain aspects of that contract that we're going to amend as well just to make this a better service for our citizens. Uh, moving on down to informational items. I know this has been on for like the past five council meetings but it's very important to, to us. We have some free smoke detectors so if you, are, if you need a smoke detector in your house or you know anyone that does, let us know. Call our fire department. We will come, we have some on stock that we will install for you free of charge. And moving on, uh, attached to the city manager's report is some information about the 11th annual Bob Christmas Memorial Golf Scramble. Um, so all the information is in here. If you want more information on that, just come visit us at the city building and we can give you copies of that. Go through here, give me one second. 
Uh, Keep Clark County Beautiful has also submitted some information to us. This is a cool little uh, program they got going on. It's called Renew, and it's Residents Elevating a Neighborhood's Environment and Welfare. So basically, you can apply, so if you want to get maybe a block of your street cleaned up, you can apply for a $2,000 grant to do so. Um, if you do get accepted for that, all your stuff will be reimbursed, it looks like. This is actually a four to five page process in here with all the questions on there. I didn't want to print all those out and put the paper in with the rest of the packets. So again, if you want more information on this, please come see me at the city building and we can hand them out then. I do believe the deadline is actually pretty soon. September, uh, September 16th. So it's going to have to be done quickly. Um, we want to get creative about it and maybe get some council members together and maybe do something to do that. Uh, just keep in mind that it looks like only one $2,000 award is going to be awarded. So if you do apply, you might not get it. But it is a good effort from Keep Park County Beautiful to help beautify Park County. And the last item on there is uh, State and Access Television. This is where our council meetings are aired on Dayton Day TV. Last year, um, they had asked for a similar donation. I just said last year wasn't the year for us to do that because we didn't have enough money. I really don't think we still have enough money, but for $1,000, this is our council meetings are on public access TV. Um, so I, I want to counsel the weigh in on it. I want your guys' opinion. Is it something that we donate $1,000 to? Because keep in mind, we put all our uh, council meetings on YouTube. Um, I've seen it on the Access TV. I don't think that, I, I want to say the air times aren't the best, but don't quote me on what they are. Um, there is. Yeah, it's on the letter. It's in the letter. Second paragraph or something. Uh, Friday. Oh, there it is. First and third Friday, the 17th, first and third Tuesday at 5 p.m. So I will leave it up to council if, if you want us to go ahead and, and make that donation to them. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to pull us all the tiers in a row of not donating. Mm -hmm. They might not be. I just don't know the benefit if we put it on live YouTube. Do you want to want to discuss this now, or sure? You want to go down? You just go down the line if you want. Mr. Lowry, do you want to, you want to weigh in on that at all? I don't think we need a vote. Just opinions. Right? Yeah, I know. I just wanted to figure out. Right, you want to talk? Do you have Do you have anything you want to say? No, I'm not for. No. Uh, I, my questions would be: How often is it actually on? Is it weekly? Mm -hmm. or, Four or four times a month, is that it? Four, four times a month. So it's two hundred fifty dollars Well, we can't look at it like that for right. the whole year, but $1,000 is a lot of money. But we are on YouTube. You can go to our website, mm -hmm. click it, and it brings it up, and we're right there. <clears throat> sure. Uh, I don't see us spending $1,000 for it, to be honest. If they wanted two fifty, I'd say yes. But uh, My church is a member of the ATV. You know, I like to be almost exempt from the conversation. Because you know, I work a lot with DATV, and uh, I'm also on their volunteer mm -hmm. committee, so I got exempt from from that. Okay. You guys have any comments on this one, Mr. McIntyre? Uh, I'm curious to know what sort of viewership the council meetings get. I understand that our meetings are on YouTube, um, and I know our newspaper does a fantastic job of covering the events. What I'm concerned with is we may have a lot of residents who don't feel comfortable using a computer and don't feel comfortable with something like YouTube. Sure. And if they're going to use this resource to get the, uh, the to view the, the council meetings, then I think it's something that we should provide as a service. But if nobody really watches it, then what's the point? And I will ask about viewership. I, I don't know if they have that capability to run the staff specifically for our programming, but it never hurts staff. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, that was literally my exact same yeah. thing. Was what was the viewership, the viewership of it? Like before we were to go in through, I'd like to see who's watching or how many people are watching at least. Okay. I would say we need to save a thousand dollars due to our financial situations. Okay. So I, I got your idea. That's all. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty much on board. You said, you, did you say they can't check no. viewership? No, because we've asked the same thing from the church. You know, how many people view it and they don't have any means. They don't have the capability. They don't have the capability no. to do that. Okay, big um, the, the biggest thing that they have, that they have, and we probably don't use it, is uh, the training classes and everything. But we probably don't need that. You know, so $1,000 is kind of hefty, I think, for them. You know, um, cause I'm going to say the church only pays 250 <laughs> So that's why it's kind of hefty. Sure. So if you can talk it now, and I think I think they will. Oh, sure. What they're uh, they're on uh, twice a week. 
So eight times eight a times month. month yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mr. Worthy. Mr. Bridge, I'd say if you get a thousand phone calls that this is not on there or ten thousand phone calls, then maybe we should do it. But I don't think you I don't think anybody uh, watches it. I have I've been here for seven years. I didn't even know it was on there. Sure. So I'm, I'm sure people aren't watching this. And it's on YouTube. And if they're really interested, they can all come to the meeting. I would think. Sure. Too, right? And I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I, I don't know the numbers, but I would say a lot of people don't use that anymore. I think maybe five, ten, maybe fifteen years ago, that was a different story. Everybody is, you know, a little more comfortable with the internet nowadays, and we do have it easily accessible from our city website. And if people don't have computers, I mean, I know there's a few people that go to the library and use their computers sure. to do stuff like that too. So. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you much. I do believe that's all I have for the city manager's report, so I'd definitely be happy to entertain any questions. Questions, council? No questions, sir. Thank you for the report. And let's see, city manager's report, moving on to comments from the members of the public. Uh, any of you have any comments or questions tonight? Do we? Not everybody wants. All right. Let's see, comments. Uh, let's go to uh, committee reports, and then tonight, so we'll move on to resolutions, Mr. Cully. Res resolution 16-06, our introduction to public area of action tonight. A resolution directing the Clark County Board of Elections to include in the general election in the city of New Carlisle on November 8, 2016, renewal of the health list. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move to, to accept resolution 1606R. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Lindsay and a second by Mr. Reynolds. And explanation of this ordinance, uh, this will actually be directing the Clark County Board of Elections to put our health level renewal on <coughs> the uh, November ballot. Um, I, the last time at the council meeting, I had some questions about what that's going to cost the homeowner. I do have that information. Uh, for an uh, average $100,000 home in the city will cost you $32.53 annually. So it's a year $32.53. Comparable from the last time we passed this levy, last time it was around, it cost the $100,000 home $30.26. So we're seeing about a $2 and some change, 20 cent change increase. Uh, what that does provide, uh, the public health for New Carlisle is for health clinic services, it's for environmental health services, health education, material and infant home visits, and Bureau for Children with Medical Handicaps. So there is a definite need to get this passed, but a lot of our citizens do use this. Every month when we have the stats from the health center, health uh, facility is directly related to what we're passing this for. Mr. Mayor. If I may have a comment. Yes, sir. You know, they always use that figure of $100,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Nucleau does not have very few properties that would fit into the $100,000 bracket. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would propose that it's probably more like $15 that would be mm -hmm. affecting our community, if that, mm -hmm. not 32. Sure. Well, $50,000 home would be about... Well, it's, it's a yeah. taxable, it's sure. what the auditor has the tax base on, sure. not what your home is worth. That's what people have to understand. A lot of people don't understand that. It's, they always use that figure of $100,000, and that's not, it's based on your, what the auditor has your home valued at for taxable reasons. And it's, Nucleo is a lot less than $100,000. So you'd be paying less than that $32. Just wanted to bring that up. Sure. Great point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council, any other questions, comments? When you're ready, Mr. Collier. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybrock. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Resolution passes 7 to 0. <coughs> Resolution 16-07R, introduction of public hearing and action tonight. A resolution declaring the necessity of improving the streets of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting. Mr. Mayor, Mr. I move that we accept resolution 16-07R as written. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. 
Oh, that wasn't even me. <laughs> 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 Mr. Mayor, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. McIntyre, whoever. Right. He was a second. I was like, okay, motion by Mr. McLaughlin, second by Mr. McIntyre. There we go. Sound like. And an explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly ordinance that we do for our street lighting assessments. This is the step one. Next council meeting has the actual ordinances. This resolution just is declaring what it says uh, the necessity to do that. Great. Council, any questions, comments? I, I have a comment. It's based on this the footage, your frontage mm -hmm. of your, your home sure. where you live. Is that if you're on a corner, you're going to pay a little bit more. If you're on a just the street, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to pay. Yep. So it's based on the footage of your, your home, and it's a renewal to renew the lighting, the street lighting in the mm -hmm. city of New Carolina. Now, we'll say this, too, and if I can add this on the you're absolutely correct, it's based on your frontage. Uh, a while ago, we had the ordinance because of the Miami Valley lighting mm -hmm. um, losing their affiliation with DPNO Energy. Well, we will see an increase of 5%. Uh, me and Col Colleen and I have crunched numbers. We don't need to pass that on to our residents as of yet. We have enough to cover that. So our residents won't see that 5% increase. We're just going to, we have enough money in there to, 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 uh, to develop it out. Mr. Bridge, how long is this uh, resolution good for? I mean, is it for like a number of years? Because I didn't see it in here. Or do we have to do this every year? It's every year. Okay. Every year we'll have it about this time of year. They're always do every August, you're going to see these, this set. The first okay. meeting in August, you're always going to see these sets of, of ordinances and okay. resolutions. All right, thank you. They're housekeeping, yeah. is essentially oh. what it is. When you're ready, Mr. Collier. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Abstain. Mr. McLaughlin. I'm being charged for front and back, but I'll have to go ahead and yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two streets. <laughs> I got the largest front end. <laughs> Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Passes 6 0 to 1. Clarification. The reason I abstain is regards to what happens on the paper. Mm -hmm. There are no street lights where I live. Okay. And I always abstain on this. Huh. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to put some out there. So you I wish you would. <laughs> I wish I had a place. <laughs> Please. Please. Right on that. <laughs> I get charged for a lamppost. All That's right. Sweet. Moving on to ordinances. If you want to go through those, Mr. Collier. Yes, Mayor. I'd share before I get started that all four of these are just introductions. I like how you added that. Those are kind of good. Oh, is it you? Yeah. Okay, nice. well, those are nice. That's, yeah. that's his brainchild. That's good move. Ordinance 16-32, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8-15-16. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carl, Ohio, by lighting them. Ordinance 16-33, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8-15-16. An ordinance levying assessments for the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. An ordinance certified, Ordinance 16-34, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8-15-16. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection of real estate taxes. Ordinance 16-35, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 8-15-16. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate, certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. That's all I have there. Thank you, sir. Um, before I have to move on to other business, Randy, Mr. Bridge, if you didn't mind, I was going to ask you a question back on the trash. Um, when you're talking about getting rid of the bags and, and coming up with like another plan for the senior citizens. Yes. Are they going to use that, that smaller trash can, or is it still going to be a big one? Just no, it's going to be smaller. Just one of them, like quarter size. Quarter I size. I think ones? they're like sixty something gallons or something. Okay. All right. So the, the goal is to get rid of the bags. The bags have been the issue. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, to follow up with the mayor. 
the waste management, is there going to be an increase or decrease, you think? There'll be an increase, but we're going to get to that later. Yeah, I don't want to dive too into it right now. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Quick, I'll follow up on that. That'll be in the next meeting, correct? Or um, hopefully, that's what I'm shooting. Okay, just want to make sure. I, they have to do some finishing things up yeah. there, um, and then I got to do some things, but I, I don't want it to go much longer because if we don't agree to it, then we're out to rebid it. Right. Okay. And if we do have to rebid it and it goes past our current contract, they're gonna they're not gonna leave us in the dark. We'll just keep on going until we find it. I think it's gonna work out. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Collier. You want to go through uh, the other business there, please? Under other business, uh, National Night Out will be Tuesday, August the 2nd, which is uh, tomorrow evening from 6, 9 in, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Church of the Brethren. That is correct. Tomorrow evening. Mm -hmm. What? Fast car? You in charge of that? Tomorrow evening. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Is that part of the Crime Watch Committee stuff, too? Also? Okay. Okay. Uh, the sixth annual Community Safety Day and Meet the Faces Behind the Badges will be Thursday, August the 11th, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Tecumseh High School, and this is presented by Family and Youth Initiatives. Uh, the Farmers Mar Market is every Saturday downtown New Carlisle from 9 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. And also on other business and uh, tax credit peti petitions submitted to the clerk of council on 7-26-16. And I did want to speak to that and update on council where that is. Uh, on uh, July 26, 2016, the city uh, received the initial initiative petitions that I had mentioned probably about a month ago in the council meeting. Uh, those were actually hand delivered to the city building sometime in the AM. It was actually it was time stamp received 726. Uh, I actually picked up those petitions later that evening uh, and certified that they were actually in my possession. And I created this letter here that indicates that uh, basically I certified that I had received who they came from. And basically, this started the process of what needed to be done. Uh, petitions. Uh, the next morning I placed a phone call to uh, the Board of Elections and spoke to a Jason Baker and informed him that we had received the petitions and that uh, I needed to get a count of how many individuals had voted in the last governor's election. Uh, after a little bit of research, he texted me back and indicated that that number was 141 signatures that would be need needed on those petitions. Petitions. What's required is 10% of the number of people who voted in that governor's election. So I verified that with him. A little bit later that morning, I spoke with uh, Lynette Dinkler, our attorney, city attorney, and reviewed the process with her. She has a copy of the petitions. Uh, we reviewed the, uh, the language that speaks to it in the charter in, in chapter 10. And I just wanted to read that paragraph that where we are in the process right now. Uh, it's section 1001, number B, says when an initiative petition, easy for me to say, <laughs> meets the requirements of this, of this charter, it is properly filed within the office of the clerk or council, which is me. And the clerk shall, within 10 days, transmit a certified copy of the text of the pros ordinance or other measure together with the petition to the Board of Elections. Uh, let's see, there's another section here. I need to find that and read that to you. Initiative and referendum petition shall be filed with the Office of Clerk for review of sufficiency, including the number, but not the validity of the signatures as indicated in A1, which basically means that my responsibility is just to make sure that there's a, enough signatures to actually pass it on to the Board of Elections. Uh, Lynette is reviewing the actual language of the proposed initiative uh, for sufficiency, and that is a term that she will have to determine what that means. She is researching that, probably talking to other municipalities to see exactly what that means. Uh, I don't know what that means, what, what the sufficiency of the petition means. Uh, my deadline is uh, Friday. This is my 10th day that I need to be 
required to take these petitions over to the Board of Elections. Once they go to the Board of Elections, then it would be their responsibility to research the validity of the signatures in whatever, whatever manner they do. It's out of my hands, and I, I think they have they have 10 days themselves, I think, to verify that the petitions are valid before they come back to us. And that's where it is in the process. Any questions? I don't know if I can answer, but I probably can't answer. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Not a question, just a statement. Um, Randy, I would like to see you, whoever, with Dale, get together, outline this, and get down to the nitty gritty and let everybody know what the process is. Not that process, but what happens if this sure. was to pass, how it works, okay? And could you help out with that deal and get a big article on the paper with it? Randy or whoever else you know. Because I think that really needs to get out there and it's not going to be done right here. It has to be, you know, in black and white. Dale and I work well together, I'm sure. I've already mentioned it to him in passing last week about the petition. Um, there definitely will be some counter campaign if it goes on in the November ballot. If it goes into May, we'll definitely still have a counter campaign. I just want council to know that this is really something that our clerk of council and our law director has to work through. I can discuss the numbers when it comes down to it, but the actual motions that he's going through is required by our charter for him to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I, there will be no doubt there will be some kind of counter campaign for the city. I'm not talking about a counter campaign. I'm just talking about the facts of what the reciprocal cost is. Sure. I have heard and read so many different stories and you never hear the same one about what happens, what doesn't happen. I would like to see the facts. Well, what's going to happen is they want a tax credit. So for the sake of easy conversation, if you work in Dayton and you live in New Carlisle, and these tax rates aren't right as far as Dayton goes, but right. for easy conversation, for example, Dayton has a 2% income tax, and you work in Dayton, and you live in New Carlisle. Um, since we already have a very low income tax rate, we have 1.5%. By the time we give you credit for the 2% you paid in Dayton, there's going to be yeah. none left over for the city. Right. But does the Dayton have to agree to that as well? Mm, yeah. I take Dayton. I, I get a tax credit through Dayton. I pay the full 1.5 percent to New Carlisle, but I get a tax credit from Dayton. So they take my 1.5 percent. They subtract that from the two and three quarters of what they are, okay. and I pay the difference to the city. Pay. Big cities can get away with doing something like this. They retain their own citizens. Their citizens work and live in their own town, or they have enough industry to kind of balance it out. <coughs> we don't have that. We don't have. What's going to happen rate. with us is people are going to be paying taxes of where they work and not where they live. So it's, it's a very scary time. I, I would just share that, that these are also issues that need to be still researched. We're still at step one. We are. I would just kind of keep it on the back burner until we find out and you what happens with each step of the petition. And then once, if, there are, if they are validated by the Board of Elections and certified and sent back to us, then, then I think that's what we need to begin to discuss the whole what it means. But you as council members, if your constituents do ask you about it, you know, we'll I'll, we'll work the numbers out and give you some information to go. That's, that's uh, but Mr. Lindsay. I believe on if this would happen to go through and pass uh, a, a general election, the if they worked in Dayton, that tax rate's two and a quarter percent, ours is one and a half. We would not have to give them the difference. They only have be credited the one and a half percent of ours. They got credit because they paid the one and a half percent exactly. Yeah. Which yeah. if I don't know how many people in town works in Dayton, but it doesn't matter. So yeah, they, it's, it's going to it's going to hurt the city. As as leave, a lot of them leave New Carlisle. We yeah. have a very low income right. tax rate co compared to our surrounding. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's compared to Springfield or City Dayton, yeah. where most of these people probably do go to work. It's yeah. it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's scary. They will not like the ramifications if that passes. No. There will be drastic measures. Too. No, drastic. Very drastic. Well, once again, let me say this is very exciting. It kind of gets your adrenaline going when you think about this, but let's just wait on the process and see what happens. Mm -hmm. It's not like you said. That's all we can do. Yeah, they can be short half the signatures they need because yeah. half of them are yeah. good. <laughs> but, uh, Mr. Yeah. Garner, you Bring said that Lynette goes through what she has now and what she's seeking, right, to make sure that her plan... She's reviewing the sufficiency of the petitions, whatever that means legally. Okay. 
I think I know what that means legally, but I'm not going to <laughs> if, it's, if what they wrote is legal or not. Right. Okay. What's my head? Which way am I bothering? That's a maybe. All right. No further comments. All right. Uh, let's see. So uh, we went through other business. No uh, executive session, none tonight. Yes, sir. Mr. Craven. Did you want something? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, this about the, um, the, the safety day. You know, to meet to meet the faces and everything. You know, they're going to give out a lot of stuff, and they're going to have a lot, a lot of stuff to do. One of the things they're going to do is book bags. You know, I'm going to bring that to their attention. You know, to people's attention out there. Um, and uh, we're going to be at the state at the state. What? Bike oh, bike helmets too. That's right. Correct. You know, so there's you know there's going to the drug take back van. It's supposed to be there. Uh, you know, so. Um, and some motorcycle safety stuff and some classic cars and, and something we all should have is uh, free blood pressure. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought I'd just, just tell you. Did you hear? Thank you, John. Yes, uh, next council meeting, executive session. We actually need to have it before, not after. Will everybody be available for a six, six, six or 6.15 six, start time? Executive session. Executive session before? Yes. We're actually going to have one and start the meeting. Can you make a six? Yeah. That's how these go. Okay. Six. 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 When that needs to be here, and she's got other ones. She's got her kids got some stuff going on there. But it's very important. That would be six o'clock. Six o'clock instead of seven. Would it would it be possible to do that the day before or no? On Sunday. I mean, like on a Friday night or something. I mean, I don't want to call a special meeting yeah, just for that. Yeah, it's best. I'd rather just do it 45 minutes or so before a regular start time. Well, you have to advertise that as well, since the time has changed. Executive session. Well, advertise the time, time, the time change. Yes. Okay. We'll just let them know we're going to executive I'll, session. I'll put that information in the legal notice. Okay. So it's going to be August 15th, starting at 6 p.m. Mr. Lincoln, can you? Oh, I, I don't work. I can make it at noon if you want to do it at noon. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I'll make sure to be back. Okay. Okay. I might be back in there. That's agreeable. That's just fine. Yeah. So we're shooting for six? Are you six okay with your work schedule? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. And then you guys are okay. Okay. Do we need a motion to put that mm -hmm. into effect or not? No. Let's put six it on or 615. We'll say six now. That way, if it is 16, it's just later. Opposed to six. Okay. <laughs> Then hopefully the normal information we tell will start about for those people who normally attend the meeting. Well, starting at 6, then we get done or just start with the meeting starting an hour early. Ten ten. All right. Anything else, uh, Mr. Bridge? No, I'm good. Executive session, that's fine. Any other questions, comments, council? I do have uh, something I want to follow up on from last meeting. The brakes on the cruiser that I complained about. Yeah, we had a discussion with that. that. The brakes are fine. We are talked with Sergeant Underwood. Those cars are old. They make they make noises all the time. The deputy I spoke to about it said the only time to squeak is when her foot's not on the brake. So, <laughs> hmm. any kind of the, let me just let me just say this. We can only fix what the cops tell us need to be fixed. Our mechanic Dave does a phenomenal job of getting these cars fixed. Uh, so when it's brought to our attention, we will definitely fix it. We're not putting anything off. Okay. We have the resources in-house to get the job done. Uh, but we just got to be very cautious about um, saying something's wrong. There's really nothing, anything wrong with the car from what I've been told. Okay. I just wanted to sure. follow up and see no if problem. anything was, if it was checked out or not. Sure. Mr. Mayor, I move we adjourn. <laughs> They are about you.